All right, welcome back again. This is again Frank DeMore with the Last Chronicles of Planet Earth for March 25th, 2011. And I'm going to continue on with the uh, prophecy from Book Revelation, Chapter 17. I'm going to put this picture up. This is a picture that you'll find in my book. And this is a, uh, you might want to freeze frame that to take a look at it. It'll come up good enough at the YouTube. Uh, and what I'm going to do is read a scripture to you and then point out why this is so important. And if you get your Bible and you read Revelation chapter 9, verse or 17, verses 9 through 14, it says this. This calls for mind with wisdom. The seven heads are seven hills on which the women sitteth. Verse 10, they are also seven kings, five have fallen, one is, the other has not yet come, but when he does come, he must remain for a little while. In verse 11, the beast who once was and now is not is an eighth king. He belongs to the seven and is going into destruction, right? So we're getting a line of information here about seven kings and then there's an eighth king uh, and I'm going to explain all this for you but I need to get the scriptures to you now in verse 12 it says the ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not received the kingdom a kingdom but who will for one hour receive authority as kings along with the beast and this is in reference to the Antichrist they have one purpose and will give their power and authority to the beast they will make war against the Lamb, and this is Jesus Christ, but the Lamb will overcome them because he is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and with him will be his called, chosen, and faithful followers, which would be the church and all the people that receive Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. Now, according, when we look at this scripture, I'm going to hold this up here for you, and you'll see that on top of each mountain there's a horn. And this is in reference to the number of kings. And you'll see that Egypt has one, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia. Greece actually has four because their kingdom was broken down into four uh, kingdoms after Alexander the Great died. And then there was Rome, which had one. And then Turkey, who uh, over a period of time became the last uh, empire, which was we know is the Turkish Ottoman Empire. So when you look at the mountains, you'll see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mountains, right? And when you count the horns, you'll see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten horns. So what this is pointing to is that there are mountains which are the kingdoms, and the kings are the horns. All right. So if the scripture tells us there are seven heads of the seven hills on which the women sitteth, there are seven kings. Now at the time that John was writing this, and you'll, you'll see this become very clear, there were seven kings, right? Five have fallen. Well, when John was in Rome, obviously when he was in Rome, right here, that's five of the kings have already fallen, right through here. And when he was talking about one is, in verse 10, it says, and one is, well, that was the Roman Empire during the time that John was writing this. It says, the other has not yet come yet. Well, if Rome had not yet come, I mean, Rome was already in existence, and the other had not come yet, and it did come later, that's the Turkish Empire. Right? Follow with me. That's pretty easy. Uh, and then it goes on to say, But when he does come, he must remain for a little while. The beast who once was and now is not. So if, Turkey, if Turkish Empire was and he is not, follow me. The beast was once was and is not. Is an eighth king. And he belongs to the seven and is going into into destruction. In other words, the Ottoman Empire that was not, but he was actually part of the this seven, or he's going to be the eighth, but he was part of the, uh, the seven. 
that we know that there's a good possibility that the Lord is showing us that in the last days, this eighth kingdom that uh, was already a kingdom and then fell apart, and we know that the Ottoman Empire fell apart, but we also know that the Ottoman Empire is beginning to resurrect again. So if the Ottoman Empire was part of the seven, and if it is the Ottoman Empire, and it's growing again now, then we can see what the Lord is showing us in this, uh, in this figure here, and in his scripture. Now, what's so important about that is because when you take a look at this, there's an article from the Middle East. And it's talking about how Turkey is becoming a strong regional power. And I'm going to read you something here that will help you understand that we need to be looking at what's, going to, what's happening in the Middle East as the Middle East is falling apart. And maybe why it's falling apart. And it's going to bring about what we know is the revived Roman Empire. And keep in mind, there's two sides of the Roman Empire. There's the Western side, which would be the European Union, and there's also the Islamic states of the old Roman Empire, which today we know that there's 10 of those Islamic states who joined together as well. And all this information is in my book. Turkey is going to play a major role, I believe. Uh, the editor of the daily uh, paper that came out, and you'll see this at my site, the links there. This is what he wrote. He says, wrote, the difference in Erdogan's policy, vice versa, the revolutions in Libya and Egypt stem from the desire to set up Turkey as the neo-Ottoman leader of the region. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying here? Now, Erdogan is the, the president of the, uh, the Turkish nation. And he wants to reestablish this Ottoman Empire that was once destroyed. It fell apart. And he wants to bring it back. And so far, he's, it's, that's what's happening. Uh, it says, the following are excerpts from an uh, editorial as it appeared in the Daily's English language edition. Those who believe that Ergon is acting in this regard according to Turkey's commercial interest are wrong. Erdogan is defending al Qaddafi despite all the crimes that Libyan leader has committed against his own people, whereas previously he was one of the first world leaders to criticize Hussein Mubarak's regime during January 25th revolution in Egypt. However, he did not take either of these positions for commercial reasons. Erdogan has responded in a different manner to events in Libya and Egypt because he is searching for leadership uh, for his country, namely the neo-Ottoman leadership. In Egypt, Erdogan is aware that it would be easy for him to ally himself with the Muslim Brotherhood, and this is the same group that wants to destroy Israel. Therefore, he viewed the Egyptian revolution as an opportunity to support change and thereby strengthening Turkey's role in Egypt. However, in Libya, Erdogan seems to be certain that El Qaddafi, and they're talking about Colonel Qaddafi here, uh, with crash, which will crash his people and emerge victoriously. Therefore, he is seeking to help resolve the Libyan impasse in order to strengthen his Turkish role, especially in light of the almost complete break in Arab-Libyan relations with exception to only two or three Arab states. It goes on. These are the goals of Erdogan's Turkey, namely to strengthen the neo-Ottoman leadership rather than to protect uh, Istanbul's commercial interest. If Turkey's Prime Minister were to be concerned about the country's commercial interest, he would have supported the U.S. against Saddam Hussein, and indeed against Iran with regards to Iran's nuclear uh, file. If Erdogan were truly concerned about this country's commercial interest and would have increased the tension in Istanbul's relationship with Tel Aviv as good relations with Israel would have guaranteed Turkey numerous trade agreements, as well as support for Istanbul's attempts to join the European Union. If this was just about commercial interest, it would have been Turkey's interest to support the Gulf states instead of criticizing the, the, uh, 
the entry of the GCC Peninsula Shield Force in Bahrain. Therefore, all Erdogan wants to do is strengthen Turkey's role in search of a neo-Ottoman role in the region. And this is something that can be described as political optimism indeed. What is happening here in the Gulf seems to have confused friends and foes alike, whether they are Arab, Islamic, like Turkey and Iran, or the Western, like the United States. It says, the consensus of joint action taken by the Gulf states is the last thing that Iran and Turkey wants to see. And this is the truth. Therefore, the entire issue is one of leadership and of searching for a role. For if Turkey is concerned about democracy, why has it aligned itself with Syria? And if it is so concerned about minorities, why has it aligned itself with Iran? In other words, what this author is showing you, this, this uh, editor for the paper coming out of the Middle East, is that the whole purpose of what uh, the Prime Minister of Turkey is doing is to set up the Ottoman Empire. Now, when you go to my website, I have a link underneath it that will take you to October 27, 2010, my post there. And I give you complete details and other information showing you that this kingdom, this seventh uh, kingdom from what, you know, what we may be seeing from Revelation chapter 17 that was established, the Ottoman Empire, is resurrecting now in the same time when the rest of the Middle East nations are going crazy and that the world is falling apart and we see all of these things taking place and they're trying to strengthen and it surely looks like that's exactly what they're doing. So what am I saying? We need to be paying attention to what's happening in the Middle East because it may be fulfilling scriptures to the max and you can see the horns, you can see the ten kings now and keep in mind, in the, in the scripture it talks about the ten kings, right? I just I gave it to you in Revelation chapter 17, where in verse 12 it talks about the ten kings. Now if Turkey gets together and they solidify their nations and they end up with the, 12, or the ten kings, and keep in mind the mountains signify kingdoms and the horns signify the kings. And so... If they bring about this entity, we could have the eastern side of the old Roman Empire emerge as an Islamic caliphate and take over. The Antichrist will rise from that and you will see the beast rise from the eastern side. And this is one of the things that we are watching for. Now on the other hand, there's also a possibility that Turkey may enter into the European Union. There's It's, it's iffy at this point, although... Um, they're saying that it is a possibility, and then you would unite both the eastern and western side. So there's a lot of things going on in prophecy that shows us the Revelation 17 is about to be fulfilled, or at least on the road to being fulfilled. And to me, that's exciting because I know that that shows us that Jesus Christ is even closer. And I tell the people, don't look for the Antichrist unless you plan to stay in the tribulation. You, your eyes should be on Jesus Christ. If you're a Christian, get your eyes off the Antichrist. Get your eyes on Jesus Christ. Those people who are going to be left behind, they're going to have to deal with the Antichrist. But the Christians are spending way too much try time trying to figure out who the Antichrist is. When you're going to be taken away, you're not going to know. It's going to happen so fast. Don't be looking for the Antichrist. Look for Jesus Christ. Your redemption is coming. And he said, look up. You should be looking up for the Lord. God bless you all.